All right, guys, Howard Wax here, back in my basement. Got a package here from Solo's Hold. This is the Nerfworks Labs V2. So um, I actually got mine a while ago, and um, I didn't do an unboxing. So this is a client of mine's, and I asked him if I could do an unboxing and a little review, and he said, sure, all excited. So let's dig in. This has been in the works for a while. And Aaron just shipped them all out. And I wanted to show how well they all, um, he packs everything. So, everything's bubble wrapped. This is the, uh, gonna be the FX plate. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh my god, I think I think there's some blood on this one. Hope you're alright, Aaron. It looks like there's some blood on that. Love, sweat, and tears, right? Alright, so we got all the little goodies. Oh, and look at the look what he included. And a patch too. That's really cool. Really, really cool. That will be sent off to the uh the, my client. So let's go through the let's go through the goodies first. We got his lever. D ring. Ooh, gonna save that one for last. We got the Set screws. And we got the nipple plug. And the mystery chunk. More on that later. So, we got the V2 here. It's like Christmas. Look how shiny. Holy cow, look at this thing. Wowzer. This thing is shiny. Wow. Alright, with it unboxed now, let's go throw it over to the workbench to do a more in-depth uh, review. So, I'm going to pack this stuff up and head over there. That's art. All right, gang, we're back over on the workbench now. I've laid out the soles holds parts that come with it. So we have the FX emitter plate. Soles hold D-ring, which is nickel um, coated steel. We have this lever. This is a steel locking block, so you'll be able to um, weather it with uh, super blue or, or gun blue. The lever is nickel plated brass you want to see my fingerprints on it the uh, nipple plug and the infamous mystery chunk So if you haven't already checked out um, Scott Juarez's um, latest YouTube video, he has gone over the V2 in details. 
Um, he explains how he hunted down the uh, mystery chunk and got all the measurements off of it. So this is the most accurate chunk there ever will be. Um, side by side, pretty much identical. Uh, I know the work that Aaron put in to replicating this and all I can say to the crappie cats is good luck because a lot it's 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 no easy task. Another thing um, is the cone knob. Scott sent Aaron some vintage cone knobs and Aaron replicated it exactly. Um, the knurling pattern on here, Aaron had to actually make the tool to copy this knurling. Uh, it's not an off the shelf knurling pattern. And there's not a, oh, it's close enough knurling pattern. No, Aaron made the freaking tool to get it exact. Everything here, Aaron has made. Um, that's no easy task. Uh, all American made. I am completely blown away that this guy has built all this stuff in his shop. Because like I've said before, um, when you're making stuff like this, you have to build things, you have to build tools to hold it, you have to build tools to help cut at certain angles. There's a lot more that goes into what you see here. Uh, we sit back on our computers and when the run goes up, we buy it with our credit card and then we sit back and wait. What you don't realize is all the freaking time, blood, sweat, and tears that actually goes into making this, just like the D-ring. You know how many hours are in just fabricating the tool to bend the D-ring? There's a lot involved. And then you got to send it out to be bladed. There is a lot involved. And I give Aaron a lot of credit. So let's, um, let's get into further detail of the V2. Let's just put the cone out on. black background to see the profile. The emitter is locked right now. The uh, nipple st is still able to spin even with the emitter locked. Matter of fact, let's put the uh, plug in there and the screws because he sent you, send you a bag with the screws in it. So I've installed the Cone knob and the mystery chunk. The mystery chunk that comes with the kit is steel. Scott says he believes the real one is steel. But, um. Another thing I like about it is the way he has it um, connect here. Um, because it's three of them, there's no way to get it in the wrong orientation so when you put your stencils on there and paint it you don't ever have to worry about it going on the wrong way so that was a really good idea it's a uh, pretty beefy it's um it's a th it's thick it's got some heft to it surprisingly considering how hollow it is it does have some heft um, here's the emitter now with the nipple, with the nipple plug. And if you notice the, uh, set screws sit kind of high and that's actually screen accurate as well. The wind vane. It's totally, totally blown away. What's unbelievable is, like I've said before, he made it all. He didn't send it out. He made it all. Oh, the pommel cubes. Yeah, 
when when you see it in person, the pommel cubes look like no other pommel cubes that I've ever seen. Um, they still have the same profile and everything, but I don't know what it is. If they're a little bit smaller or, or what, but they're t totally different than whatever whatever else I've ever owned. They're much different. I mean, you can actually see in the, the, the screen, it's almost got a mirror finish to it. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. So this is it. This is the Nerfworks Labs V2. Fabricated by Solos Hold. And all the measurements and information came from Scott because he's seen it and held it and even seen seen it apart and This is Scott's baby. You have to see it in person. And it's got, got some weight to it. But the cone knob, I missed you, Trump boy. I don't know if the lighting is... Now, I believe he said you had to get shorter set screws to get the emitter to spin. And I've, I've ordered some, I have some here, so I'm gonna try and um, take this apart, see if we can get the emitter to spin. Okay, so Aaron has mentioned that the emitter can only go on one way. The threads have to match the cup inside, so what we should, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just make a mark. There's Ruby barking. Just to make sure we don't mix anything up. So I'm gonna take this up like this. With Solo's hold, every his tolerances are so tight. I'm just gonna go like this. I'm gonna make a shopping mark here. Actually, he already did it, didn't he? Yep, look what he did. He already did it. So Aaron's one step ahead. So he's got a sharpie mark there with a sharpie mark there. <laughs> he's always one step ahead, this guy. Okay. It's a beautiful, beautiful machine. Gotta stop that dog. Okay, one important thing is this copper cup needs to be screwed all the way down, okay? Because the nipple will not sit flush and the uh, midter plate will not want to go down. So we're gonna line up all of our black lines. Put our, make sure we can see our screw. There we go. Now I'm going to install the 440 by quarter inch long screws. This is so difficult to do with gloves. Okay, so I put the 440 quarter inch long set screws in there, and Aaron loves his tolerances. He puts things very tolerance tight, so um, you may have to do just a little bit of sanding inside, but um, I ended up getting this one to spin without sanding. My, the one that I got was a master and it needed some, some sanding to get it to spin, but um, these gloves don't help either. But that's how you do it. All you need is to install those quarter inch long set screws. You may be able to get away with 3 16 because with quarter they're just sticking out a little bit, and uh, 3 16 you might be able to bury it in there a little bit more before it touches the cup inside. So, give it a breakdown, and gotta give a huge shout out 
to everyone involved in making this happen. This was... This was worth the wait. I know uh, there's a crystal chamber in the works by Goth, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, Trent is just finishing up doing a run of stencils, so you can keep an eye out for that. So that pretty much sums it up. Um, Aaron has very limited of these left. So if you want one, now is the time to grab one because when, once they're gone, he's never doing another run ever again of a V2. So um, I wouldn't hesitate. Uh, it is an expensive purchase, but as you can see, it's well worth every penny. The engineering that went in into it I mean, every single part is smooth. We have mirror polished parts here. Look at the pommel cube. You can see the reflection. Very, very, very impressed. I, for one, personally can't damage mine. Um, and that's because when I, when I look at this, this V2, I've seen and know what Aaron went through to make this happen. And... Um, Aaron, you don't know how much respect I have for you. Um, with everything going on, and you still came through with everything, and you're still doing it, God bless you, man. I, incredible, incredible job. I give you a standing ovation because this is phenomenal. Um, so mine's, mine's not going to be damaged. I'm going to polish mine to a mirror finish and just to show off the craftsmanship of that man, so... That pretty much sums it up. Very, very impressed. It can't get any better. It can't get any better. Got to thank every single person involved with this to make it happen. Um, incredible. Keep an eye out for uh, for the Goth chassis. And um, oh, I'll be doing a. Everybody's been messaging me, and uh, it's like, what do we do to the Mr. Chunk? How do we weather the Mr. Chunk? It's simple. Scott basically showed you in his video. It's very simple. We're just gonna buff it up, uh, sand the sides, dull it in a few space, uh, places, and chemically age it. Same thing with the cone knob. So next weekend, I'll do the video of aging uh, the cone knob and the Mr. Chunk. Because this isn't mine, this is a, a client. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Again, thank you everybody that was involved. Thank you to all the viewers. This is Hallowax. Out.